afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for August 9th, 2020, Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, remember that uh, I'm having a call on Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern addressing personnel needs uh, and structures uh, for people's bona fide projects and, and uh, kind of sharing some insight there uh, on the next phase of people who have bona fide projects, people that have projects, not <clears throat> they have an idea of what it is they want to implement so that we can do a, a kind of a, an overview of some of the aspects of the situation where people have thought uh, the direction of people, the people direction. That is the biggest uh, challenge for any project is the proper people. Uh, and the proper positions to initiate uh, the actual project launch. So, and there's a lot of people that, you know, I don't think they have a clue on how they're going to have a staff. So, uh, it's different, kind of a different twist on it. So that's at uh, uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern on this line. There's a lot of things that we, you, you get, and I'm sure you, you can all recognize this, you get so used to, so acclimated to certain things. And then when you step out of that field or that uh, comfort, uh, it's very uncomfortable for a lot of people to do things that they're not normally used to doing. Because it, it, it literally, shuts down their agendas, their, their uh, structure on exactly what they do, how they do it, every day, throughout life. So whenever you step out of that realm, so to speak, it's discomforting for a lot of people to do different things, different ways, uh, to do something totally different that they are not really used to or acclimated to. If they just look at it and go, you know, this doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel comfortable. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know if I really want to uh, immerse myself in this because it's very foreign. We have a tendency to just stick with things that, uh, redundancy that we do because it's comfortable and we get used to it and uh, it's a no brain where we don't even have to think about it. We just do it automatically as if a program robot would do it. So it's like if you don't honor yourself, you're not going to honor others. If you are not honest with yourself, you are not going to be honest with others. And it always stems from within you. No matter how much you want to argue it with yourself, no matter how much you want to uh, tackle, you know, wrestle with it at times, it always goes right to the source, you. And this, it plays an important role and action in this life that we understand that right down to the core bone. If we are not loyal to ourselves, we cannot be loyal to others. Loyal just means that you're treating them as if they're you. Now, if you cannot treat yourself with the highest amount of esteem, uh, gratefulness, um, love, kindness, and gentleness, then you're going to have some severe issues along the way in this existence. 
And that's why it's always about practicing about you. Always about you. And this is how we perfect the God within and the merging with this, this existence so that we can be the God outside. It's, it, it's one thing of having the God within. It's another thing of being able to literally move that God outside of you, where you literally shine your light on everything. And a lot of people, I think, have uh, a conflict with that because they're not sure what that really means. You, we, we all have the reverence and the uh, perfection of pure consciousness or the God within us. So doesn't it make sense that we bring that God so that as we walk this planet, in these bodies, that the God is shining out on everything. And that's a big difference because when that happens, and it will happen, you, you sh everything shifts. You, you, you just don't have the, uh, the same uneasiness, stressfulness, tension, anxiety, hurriedness, worriedness uh, that you did before it's gone and it doesn't come back. And this is the, the paradise, the God planet that we're, we're in now. It doesn't seem like it because of the illusion of all of the activities and the doom and gloom, doom and gloom, doom and gloom. Uh, but it is. The more active that gets, the, the, you realize that the more it is being dissolved. When the light is shined upon corrupted souls, they scurry and scatter. They don't make sense. They can't put structure and organized effort together anymore. It's fractionated, uh, splintered, and it begins to just dissolve and fall away. This is why always going within is absolute. It is an absolute for each and every one of us. A total absolute. For instance, if you were to understand with yourself, you're sitting somewhere. You might, who knows what you're doing, you know, but you're, by, you're, you're, you're with you. And you realize that you start focusing on the externality of things. You start realizing that I'm not, I, I, I don't care to anymore have the uh, motivation to engage with any of this stuff. And I used to. Uh, passionately. But now I don't. I, it, it's not there for me. And a lot of people are expressing this that their perspectives are shifting. That what they, how they used to view things, they don't anymore. Uh, the things that they were motivated to have, want, get, is not there anymore. Uh, that as you go within yourself, and you choose to do so, because no one can force you to do it, you do it because you want to and you desire to and you choose to do it. So as you, you begin to experience waves of love at different intensities, and as you go deeper within to the very core of your being, you begin to experience deeper waves of love, more, more impactful uh, to you. And as this happens, these are like waves that come out from your God, from your source creation. And these waves are very loving and embracing. So, you know, I guess is the best way to put it is, is that when you, um, you're in a, an ocean and the wave comes in, it's warm and you ride the wave and it's like effortless and it's, you know, that you're done body surfing or, you know, ride a wave but it's nice and warm and it, it feels good. 
accelerate that to a thousand as far as how good it feels. As this happens, you will experience a shedding, uh, a literal shedding. And the shedding, it's not like you're gonna, you know, like a snake and see your skin fall off or anything. It's a shedding of the old world and the last attachments to you in the old world. The, the lower vibrational frequencies disintegrate and with each wave and the deeper you go into your core being a lot of these in fact everything eventually you'll you'll just it'll just subside and vanish and your perspective of things will totally shift you you will know that you are always provided for taken care of and loved you will know it it will be deep within you it won't be superficial it won't be something that you try like you did in the 33d world tried to be uh, through the ego mind thinking that you were through the emotional uh, where you were saying oh yeah and this and that and trying to convince yourself and then it would come back and come back and come back and it was never really effective it's from your core existence and you'll you'll look at you'll see look experience things totally differently you'll you'll just you'll you'll float you'll roll with it it'll be easy and it will be effortless and you'll all of a sudden you'll shift into an understanding and reality for yourself that all of that stuff is fading quickly your attention is not on it anymore it's going it, it's actually it's totally disappeared and you, you won't have any last vestiges of wanting to hold it you see you all of us own own nothing none of us do we own nothing our kingdoms are these bodies it's been said throughout the ages and very clearly the body is the kingdom and the god is housed within the kingdom hence the kingdom of god is within each and every one of us god within the pure consciousness this is a massive major shift for this civilization and it really is unprecedented not a lot of time is spent on the depth of it we are all uh, students of source creator we are students in, in the perspective of how much we choose to learn and then it's up to us it's not up to anyone else do you honestly believe that Source Creator dictates to what you have to do and not do? No. You were you were given everything that you will ever need throughout your entire existence, which can be, and I'm talking about the God within you, not the body, but you're talking about billions and then into trillions of spaces of time or, or spaces of time of years that you will continue to learn if you choose to and then you'll begin to understand how minuscule all of these things that occupied you and in, in, in the lower densities for so long how insignificant they were yes they're they're an experience yes they're you experience these things but that's all they are is experience. It's it's it isn't a uh, forever to be. It is what you deem to be, without the uh, the expectation and attachment. Without that, okay, that's what gets most of us miscombobulated. Um, throws us into a helter skelter mode 
uh, gives us, you'll know it because you become more and more sensitive to external influences that are trying to push you into this and that, trying to get this and that. And you, you it, it's, it's abrasive after a while and you just say, you know what? Uh, there's no interest in this. The interest I have is becoming more aware of me, understanding. Does it make sense that in, in order for you to become the master of you, you've got to learn who and what you are right all the way into the core of your very being. And then all of these, all of this externality is meaningless. You, you understand that it's, it really is insignificant because it's just an experience. It's like our thoughts, they're just thoughts. And, and how, we, how we get so serious about life, how we get so intense, how we allow things to lead us how we put things in front of us that, that we follow that lead us. And then that's necessarily in, in wonderful directions. So, as, it, it, and the motivation for us is, is that I desire to know the God within me as much as I can from every single aspect. And as you do that, you begin to free yourself more and more. This is, this, is, this is the ascension. You begin to free yourself more and more. You begin to look at things in a different perspective. You begin to understand the fluidity of the God within you. There's the great expanse, uh, your ability to be all that there is everywhere, uh, all the time. To know that you are intimately connected to all the particles of existence. Uh, to know what you can really do. What you're, you've been, all of us have been given through the source creation of all of the things that we just don't know yet that we have the abilities to engage. We're not, this isn't a, like I said, it's like a train station on a long trip. You stop off in the train stations or a bus station or, or a cruise on a ship. We stop off at different ports in existence. We go around and we see the things and interact and then we get back on our vehicle, which is the God, and we continue onward. They're not permanent. You, once you understand this, they're not permanent. These, this life that we're, that, that we're experiencing, it's a blink of existence. It is literally a blink. And we will have literally thousands and millions of existences. Each piece of, those, of these blinks each piece, we learn. We choose what to learn. We don't know it most of the time, but we actually, we, we, we are drawn to certain things, we learn them. And then we move on. You know? Get, get yourself refueled, and then you step on the bus, get on the boat, on the train, and move forward. You ever notice you're always moving forward in these analogies. You're not backing up. Where are we going now? Well, we're going to back up 300 miles. We're going to go back, back in the past. That's why when you're moving forward, the past is instantaneous. Every single step you take, and that's it. You're always leaving it behind. You don't go back and get it. Because you know that you always, forever, through all of your journeys are protected, loved, cared for, supported across the board. And see, what happens to a lot of us is we don't believe that. 
We really don't. We allow our egos to get us so stressed in different directions that a lot of the times we become comfortable with that. And this is where we become distraught, worried, and stressful, and fearful. These are all of these things, judgmental, you know, evaluating others. When you, you move with yourself, for yourself, by yourself, of yourself, all of these matrix structures melt away. You're no longer imprisoned, so to speak. You're no longer behind bars. You are free to walk and do whatever you choose. And the constraints that we all experience in this particular existence, it's life. We gather and engineer ourselves. That we just, that's what we do. We gather and engineer ourselves for ourselves. Every remember. Thought comes in. You're in the sky and you have clouds passing you by all the time. And you have a thought. Now you can choose to reach out, pull that thought to you. Or you could say, this is just a thought and I'm not going to engage with it, so I'm just going to allow it to pass by. Yeah, it came up in front of me, uh, but I, I'm not, that's not, you know, right now that that's not something that I want to bring into reality. And guess what? You'll visual, visually see the cloud just go by. Nice and smooth, it's float by. And then other, others are just lined up and it's continual. So you, you know, you'll identify the thought. You just won't create it into reality because you'll know enough of yourself to say that that, that will not do well for me. So therefore, I'm not going to engage it. And this is how you can slowly but surely navigate away from the ego mind that's incessantly saying, oh no, take all of them. Everyone that comes by, grab it. I don't care if you can't hold it. Just keep grabbing them all and creating them into reality. And remember that the ego mind is never satisfied. So it's constant. And this is what happens to most of us on this planet. We become so wrapped up in externality that we lose the understanding and the love that we are. We, we don't live it. How do you think people can harm others for just stupid crap. Think about that. How can that be? We're all gods within these bodies. How can we harm another or do harm? How can that be? That's because of the confusion that we've been taught to not believe of what we truly are to stay separated from us, which is an illusion, and to always embrace externality. What do you think drugs and all of these addictions civilization is faced with? What are they? They're diversions. That's all they are. And they're meant to keep us in lower vibrational frequency. That's all they are. And guess what they start with? One thing. What do they, what do they start with? Every single thing in this matrix, guys, is, starts as a thought. Every single thing. And the thoughts motivate our emotions through the heart-mind, whether they be good, bad, or indifferent. It's a, it, it it's all starts with the thought. Now, thought and physicality in a, in a, in a material externality of a world, there's a lot of them because we look at everything and we have all these thoughts and we have thoughts from the day we are in the womb of our mothers. We have thoughts activating, moving, hear uh, vibrational frequencies and voices. And then when we 
actually her birth, we pick it up more and more. We're like this, 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 this sponge that's uh, condensed and, and just drink thousands of gallons of thoughts. Everything begins with a thought. Everything. There is no exception. It's how you perceive from the thoughts that you embrace. And we know that most of those thoughts are not yours. So then you begin to understand and as it unravels for you, then it is always about being within, not outside. Okay? Then what happens to the thought? They're only there and they're only for when you desire to experience something that you have identified that you want to experience. Clearly, with, without random, you know, flailing around with just randomality, where you just are, uh, okay, I'll get this, I'll this, I'll this, I'll this, I'll this, I'll this, and then they just keep pouring in, which happens to most of us. Everything and this civilization begins with a thought. And it all stems on who we understand we are, what is or of our being, to determine which thoughts we generate, we generate, to embrace and create into reality for ourselves. Everything begins with a thought. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, I'm sure we all are. And a thought, relax the body. Let go of anything that you may have attracted in the last 24 hours. Because guess what? It all started out as thoughts. Whatever state you're in or experiencing right now was because of the thoughts you created into reality. Try to debate that with yourself. Try to argue it. You'll find it is useless. It's senseless. It's futile. Because you know it to be true. So it's just like I relax my body, that's a thought that you create into reality. So guess what, the body responds and you relax. But isn't it difficult as externality has tried to convince us of it being so? So as we relax the body from head to toe, we just release, drop our shoulders, let all of the tensions, stresses, fears, anxieties that we harbor, even any dishonesties with ourselves. All go, body relaxes, then we move into the now. What, you know, what is this now? Is it a thought? Yes, it is. The now is a thought, moment to moment, moment to moment moment to moment. It's a thought that you, you choose to embrace create reality. So when we're looking at something, you're, you, it's a thought. Now honestly, a thought can come through the heart-mind. It doesn't have to come through the brain, you know, as we've been misled to believe. It doesn't have to come through the ego. It can come through the heart-mind. And you'll understand it because through the ego mind, it comes down on you. You'll feel it, it comes down on you. But through the heart mind, it moves up through you. It moves up through you. It has a different vibrational frequency than the ego mind thought. It comes down over you. So in the now, body relaxed. We don't go into the past. We do go into the past and we experience 
we reminisce thoughts, memories, which is, you know, it's fine. It's, we, 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 we harbor on the good things of the past. But the point is, is that we don't care to stay there too long because we all know if we do, then we will bring the past in its entirety into a future that doesn't exist, create that future from that past, relive that past and that future. And this is where we find ourselves saying, I feel like I've been running in circles my whole life. And we don't go into the future, why would we? It isn't there yet. The only thing that is, is the now. So in the now, we create a future. The now, we still our mind. See? Leave the mind alone and see what happens. It's not negative either. So also, we relax the body, we move into the now. The now stills the, the mind, relaxes us, calms us. We want to breathe. What is the breath? The breath is divine positive energy. Why is it divine positive energy? It sustains the kingdom of God. The body. The kingdom, the body of God. The spirit, the higher self, the soul, all of the parts of the God. Every one of us. So the divine positive energy sustains the body. Try not to breathe, see what happens. A no-brainer. So, as we breath in through the nose, easy, and then breath out through the mouth, easy, we begin to move ourselves into higher frequency by doing this. And the breath, the breath continues to calm us because it's only in the now that you cannot debate that. There's no such thing as a, a future breath or a past breath. It is only the breath in the now. So this continues to add to calming this, uh, serenity, and blissfulness. And that when you when you're breathing, you you recognize the power of it. And you also, as we were seated in a comfortable position, we look at the body and we have these beautiful wheels of light and they run right from toxic to the, 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 the to the beginning of our spine and they go all the way up to the center of the body right up to the head and these are energy vortexes and what they do is is that we move our chi our god light energy through them and this is the balance between the physical and the spiritual. It's the balance. If the, if the, if the spirit is aligned as perfection, the body is not, there will be disharmony in the body. Research it, you'll find that this is a fact. You will also find that any of those energy vortexes, any of those chakras that become blocked, and our chi, our godlike energy, cannot flow through, then everything is connected, all of these energy vortexes, all these chakras are connected to our different organs, tissues within our biological bodies. And we will have disharmony in organs in our body, emotional and physical. This is how important energy vortexes are. So as we breath in our divine positive energy, we start with the root chakra. It's the red wheel of light. And this is self-preservation, stability, innocence, physical health, prosperity, trust, security, survival, grounding. This is what the, the, the root chakra, the red wheel of light, regulates.
stimulates your spine. And it, this is the imbalances that you'll experience if you have blockages. Anemia, fatigue, lower back pain, depression, cold hands and feet, eating disorders, skin problems, lack of energy, frequent cold, sciatica, fearful, anxious, restless, and underweight. It's, it's important on our journeys that we understand these. And then we go, we take the divine positive energy through the orange wheel of light. Second chakra, the sacral chakra. And this is touch and taste, that's our senses. And it regulates our pleasure and our feeling and our sexuality and our sociality and our creativity and our knowledge. And it's below the navel. Just below the navel is where it's located. And the imbalances, eating disorders, alcohol and drug abuse, depression, asthma, yeast infections, urinary problems, frigidity, fear of sex, poor social skills, lack of desire and passion, fear of change, impotency, lower back pain, denial of pleasure. Then we move to the yellow chakra, the yellow wheel of light, the solar plexus chakra. This regulates our vitality, our purpose, our satisfaction, our contentment, our peace, our personal power, our confidence, our self-control. And the imbalances, our low energy, poor self-esteem, passive, sluggish, victim mentality. Everybody's after me. Everybody's going to get me. Everybody wants me to, be, to fail. Unreliable, poor self-discipline, weak will, poor memory, constipation, nervousness, diabetes, ulcers, arthritis. And then, and then we go to the green wheel of light, the fourth shot for the heart. And... That's the center of the chest. And it regulates compassion, acceptance, forgiveness, responsibility, confidence, security, stability, and prosperity. Remember, it's the, obviously the heart chakra is the center of the chest. Now that imbalances, heart disorders, breathing disorders, chest pain, high blood pressure, muscular tension, shyness, judgmental, bitter, lack of empathy, intolerant, critical, fear of love, loneliness, and depression. This all, this, this will all begin to have clarity with you as you continue to ascend. Then we go to the fifth chakra, the throat chakra, blue wheel of light, hearing, creativity, communication, diplomacy, trust, expressionism, loyalty, organization, where is it located? Throat area. Okay. And the instabilities, fear of speaking, weak voice, tone deaf, shyness, poor rhythm, swollen glands, fevers, flu, hyperactivity, hormonal disorders, thyroid problems, poor self-expression, sore throats, ear infections, scoliosis. And then we go to the sixth chakra the indigo wheel of light it's intuition and what this tends to is psychic abilities forgiveness compassion consciousness imagination you're seeing visualize this flow through your heart minds where is it located center of the forehead what are the instabilities if it becomes blocked if, the, if our chi our godlike energy cannot flow through it Poor vision, poor memory, insensitivity, lack of imagination, dreamless dreams. We all dream. But when this happens and we do not have a flow, then we have dreamless dreams. Denial, infections, headaches, seizures, learning disabilities, facial fever, facial nerve problems, eye and ear disease, nose and sinus problems. And then finally, but not least, the seventh chakra, the crown, violet wheel of light. Knowing, wisdom, knowledge, consciousness, subconsciousness, superconsciousness, 
knowingness, trust, spiritual connection. It's located on the top of the head. And the instabilities, apathy, materialism, greed, domination of others, amnesia, headaches, photosensitivity, mental illness, epilepsy, senility, skin irritation, spiritual cynicism, chronic exhaustion, genetic disorders. Now, understand, it's very important to these positive energy, our God-light energy, all the way through all of these energy vortexes. And then we come to the top of our head and just a little bit to the back, and we hold that. And I am light, I am love, I am. And in that brief instance of holding it, we compress and condense it into pure liquid energy. And we release it over the pineal gland. Now this pineal gland is very important to us while we're in these bodies. It is when it's fully functioning, it's the gateway to all the particles of existence, the pure consciousness and beyond. So you view it as a prune, a raisin, uh, a pine cone, uh, however you view it, I look at it as a rosebud and kind of a green ball. I, when I release this pure liquid energy over it, it immediately blooms, blossoms into a beautiful, vibrant rose, multicolored petals, and its aura, it's humming, and it's eternal, it's immortal, and it has a beautiful fragrance. And it is the pineal in full health, full operation, vibrant. And it connects me to all the gateways of existence. It connects me directly with Source Creator. It connects me to all the particles of existence and beyond, to pure consciousness, to God. It is our conduit. right down to the core of our being of who and what we are. It is our teacher, it is our guide. So we all are consciously aware that we are of and from the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest. Gratitude. If we were not conscious of this, we could not be here in this meditation with all of our brothers and sisters. Our frequencies would be too low. And we know we are one. We've merged. We've merged the body, the God, the higher self, the spirit, soul. All of it's merged as one. We are the kingdom of heaven on earth. We are the kingdom of God on earth, on this planet, in this now, in this meditation, in the forming of this circle of life. We have others with us. They're with us in the beginning of each of these meditations. The archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, and the archetypes. Now, this is a civilization that vibrates at a different frequency than we do. This is why we don't see them, like we see each other, but they're there. They can appear uh, as they choose in humanoid form. Some of the strangest situations that will occur in this life you are experiencing uh, will, will actually take you to them because they would like to, to be with you and talk with you and interact with you. And they're just elated to do so. We all have them, it's just that we don't recognize them most of the time. They've been assisting us from the very beginning. They are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, 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 deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, 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 deepest eternal gratitude. Now, thousands can surround any one of us at any one time due to the point of their vibrational frequency, they're allowed to have a large number in a small area. They assist us all the time. None of us are alone. We never will be. We never have been. And it continually 
again to the thought. When we've helped them. And it continues, the synergy, the togetherness. Then we have the Ascended Masters. Anyan, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Sananda Jesus, El Moria, Abandon, Hell and Thought, many, many, many more. They are those who have ascended out of body and hold God form pure consciousness. We are those who have ascended into body to experience physical form. So our pure consciousness enters these physical bodies to experience them. And all of us continually learn. Archangels, ascended masters, ourselves, and all of those we call in this day. So we're compelled to call out to all the other facets and aspects of Source Creator. All of our brothers and sisters, we call out to all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. They, all of those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, and be with us in this now, in this meditation and forming the circle of light. And they come in the Google Plexus. One Google Plex fills this universe. They come in the trillions of Google Plexus from trillions, trillions of universes. And they are with us now. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, beneath the earth, Abarta. Many, many, many civilizations and species. Only those who are consciously aware from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the form of the circle of light. If they come in the billions, and they are with us now. We call upon all the off-worlders, all the galactics, all the celestials, only those who are consciously aware that they are even from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and even from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now, in this meditation, a form of the circle of light. Now, over a thousand of them different species civilizations come through the solar system every day we're only familiar with a handful and this includes all the species and levels of these civilizations the Pleiadians, the Assyrians Andromedas, the Arcturians Zeta Reticuli Eli Nords Graves, Draco Reptilians Golden Pyramid, Avion, many, many, many more. They've been assisting us in our evolution, in our enlightenment, in our ascension, and freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they come to the billions, and they're with us now. We call upon all of our loved ones, all of those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we have inhabited. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love from the highest, and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now in this meditation in this circle of life. The forming of it. And they are with us now. We call upon all of the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and be with us in this now, in this meditation and the form of a circle of light. 
Now, they come in trillions in numbers, shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations, in which many we've never seen before. And just to name a few of our, a few of them that we're familiar with. Fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, many, many, many more. And they come in the trillions and they are with us now. We're all gathered. All of us, all of our gods together, arm in arm, hand in hand, we're all in full compassion. Non-judgment, non-negativity, non-ego, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness. have the power 
that if you decide to go deep into lower vibrational frequencies, the dark matter frequencies, and lower survival matter frequencies, you will create a breach in your armor enough so that they can come flooding in. You're immediately met with the purple transmuting flame. This column reminds you that if you do decide to do this, lower your vibrational frequencies, you can bring in the purple transmuting flame, you can immediately transmute all of these lower frequencies in a neutralized substance, and you can literally send them back to your consciousness where they are no more. Then you're met with the violet ray. This column reminds you that you can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. You can cleanse and purify, and you can re-establish your high vibrational frequency, therefore sealing the breach in your white fire armor and rebalancing that of which you are, the highest and deepest eternal love and gratitude. Then we're met with the golden light, pink light. This is a column that reminds us of what we're made of, what created us. The source creator created us out of pure, deep, eternal love. It's the highest power and all that there is, ever has, been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. We see it in our sunsets, we see it in our sunrises, we see it in our skies. We see it in our rainbows, we see it everywhere. It's there as a subtle reminder of the absolute glory, divinity, perfection, love and peace and joy that each and every one of us house within us. Now we continue to levitate up. And some of us, carrying physical forms, step outside of our physical forms and we float effortlessly above them. As we do this, we come into a view of a massive crystalline light tower. And we created this tower. It looks just like a crystal. You can see through it. But in the center, in its heart, this aura with brilliant, trillions and trillions of reflexing and harmonizing light waves. And it looks like a ball, kind of. And it has beautiful auric rims and rings around it. And it's pulsating out. And each time it breathes out, it sends this wave that saturates everything and everything. All of our brothers and sisters on and above and below this planet Earth guy are in this now in this meditation circle light. And it's lifting the vibrational frequencies. It's eliminating all of the lower dark matter frequencies and lower survival matter frequencies. And at the top we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees. And the golden ocean is deep, pure, eternal love, and it's saturating everything and everything. See it through your heart minds. Feel it. Each of us are drops of that golden ocean. Each of us hold the essence of it. Then, move a little bit, we ascend a little bit more. And we see this massive meditative sphere. We all created this sphere over two years ago. It's that center circle. It houses over 900 meditations from all of us, all of those off world, with the intent of liberating this planet Earth, Gaia, this now, this meditation, and the circle of life. Lifting up.